Hey everybody, this is Les Taylor of lestaylorphoto.com and today I'm a little bit sick, but hopefully that won't stop me from uh, getting through this quick tip for you guys. And in this quick tip, I want to talk to you about the importance of non-destructive editing. So in Photoshop, there's two kinds of editing that you can do. You can do destructive editing or non-destructive editing. And in destructive editing, you actually change the image itself, whereas in non-destructive editing, you work on top of the image and the benefits that this gives you are varied and many but in this case I want to show you the importance of it because what it allows you to do is if you have made a mistake earlier on when you were editing an image you can go back and correct that mistake without being penalized or at least lowering that penalty substantially so for example uh, if you have 10 steps in your post-processing workflow and you made a mistake on step 2, well, if you edit destructively, then you have to go all the way back in your history, if you even can at this point, to step 2, correct that, and then redo steps 3 through 10. But if you have edited non-destructively, then you can go back to step 2, and you don't have to redo all those other steps, or at least you won't have to do them fully. You may have to make some small adjustments, but it will be a lot easier than if you had just done it destructively and had to go all the way back to the beginning. So this actually is a great example of what I'm talking about here. Now this is an image of the Hineker Covered Bridge in Hineker, New Hampshire. I took it just a couple of weeks ago um, during the fall foliage season. It was very beautiful. And this is actually an HDR shot that I imported from Lightroom. And so I had three bracketed shots that I uh, put together in Lightroom and then brought in here into Photoshop. The problem is uh, when I put this together in Lightroom, these images, of course, you have the, the leaves here in the river. And since the river is moving, uh, it was moving very slowly, but moving nonetheless, so these leaves actually end up being in different places in each shot. And so Lightroom has a little bit of a difficult time blending all that together. And I've already masked out a lot of that and fixed those problems, but I realized after I've made a lot of edits that I missed a few spots. You can see right here, let me zoom in a little bit more, you can see that better. You can see there's a lot of ghosting here. I missed some spots uh, over here as well. You can see it right there. Um, and some over here. I really didn't do a very good job. I should have paid a little bit more attention. But that's why I do, when I'm getting close to finished, I try to go back and look over all that and make sure that I haven't missed anything. Now again, if I had edited non-destructively, or if I had edited destructively, if I had made edits to the actual image, I would be in trouble here. I'd have to go all the way back and do that, because that was the very first step that I did. But because I have done this non-destructively, I can very easily go back and fix that without being penalized in this case. Now what I did at the very beginning, like I said, this is the very first step that I did. I masked out those areas and corrected that. And so I took that masked area, or those two layers that I masked together, and I turned them into this original smart object. And so I can open those layers again by simply double clicking on this smart object. Now we'll open them up here in this separate window. You can see this is what it looks like after all my color edits, and this is just what it did, uh, what it looked like straight out of Lightroom. So if I zoom in here, let me turn off my mask that I've done already. And you can see all of that ghosting in here. It's all over the place. So I corrected a lot of it, but I did miss some things. So all I'm going to do is find those spots where I messed up, and I'm going to mask them out properly, like I should have done to begin with. So most of the things look good, but I did miss a few spots. So we'll correct those here. Hopefully I won't miss any this time. Correct those here and down under this leaf. And I'm using a fairly light brush. It's not um, too too hard. I mean, the opacity is 100%, but you can see the, the hardness is down to zero, so the edges will be kind of soft and the center will be stronger. And that's how I usually will work when I'm doing masking like this. So most of those leaves look good. Now I know I need to go over here. I'm going to increase the size of this brush some while I work on this area over here. So correct that. And uh, need to correct some of that there too, it looks like. And it looks like overall, I probably could fix that. Let's go ahead and fix that too, fix that tree. 
And that looks pretty good. I'm not super worried about it, but I think that looks good enough for here. This stuff off in the distance won't really get picked up so much, so that's fine. So we'll zoom back out here. That looks good. Now all I have to do is I'll push Control S on here to save these, uh, these edits now. And this will say that it's updating the smart object. So what it's doing now is it's updating the smart object that's used over here in this file. Close this. And so it's updated that smart object. And now if I zoom in, you can see that that has been corrected. All of that ghosting is now gone in all of those areas because I've corrected it and I don't have to worry about that anymore. And the great thing is I don't have to go back and do any of those coloring edits. All the coloring has stayed exactly the same but I have been able to correct for the areas that I didn't mask the first time. So that is why it's so important to do non-destructive uh, non -destructive editing when you're working in Photoshop. And it's a really important thing to remember as you try to work on your professional uh, post-processing workflow. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Until next time, guys, thanks for watching. This has been Les Taylor of lestaylorphoto.com, and I'll see you in the next video.